Coming up, we're going to be telling you our favorite things to do in Anaheim off of Disneyland property uh, from the Bob Varley studio in Orlando and various points around Southern California. This is the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged. This is episode 749 of the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged for the week of October 29th, 2018. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect vacation. Visit them on the web at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. I am your host, Rhino Clavin, and to join me for this week's episode, we have got all the way from sunny California, Tyler Hi everyone. <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't. Tyler, I didn't. I'm like Rhino now. You, I'm, we're like Cher, Rhino, Tyler. That's yeah, what it is. I'm trying to do the Disney thing and leave out the last. I always feel weird being like Tyler Crouch. <laughs> it's all good. I'm, Katrina I'm, Manzoni. Hi. And who is behind door number three? That's Mr. Tom Bell. Hey everyone. And in the back, we've got Craig Williams. Hey. Not in the back of our hearts. In the front of our heart. I, uh, man, I thought I had something there I, just, and I lost it so fast. I can't wait till Katrina and Tyler get married so we can start calling her Caddy Crouch. Oh, <laughs> oh I know. <laughs> you just I made an enemy. I will be very catty at that point. I feel like <laughs> that's like when you try to move a couch around a corner, like it's a catty couch, you know, like a kitty oh, wow. corner, like you're doing wow. a catty crouch. It's a catty crouch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anyway, well, this I hate week, everyone. Let's move on. <laughs> um, uh, Pete is not with us this week. Uh, he is in um, a better place. That place is Hawaii. Um, he has not. It did sound like wow. I, was, I, I do regret saying using those uh, that terminology. Uh, but he is in uh, Alani, enjoying himself. I'm sure at this moment in time, and he is probably going to be consuming pumpkin spice ice cream that they have out there that I am incredibly jealous of. Um, but he's out there um so make sure that you're staying tuned to our facebook at Diz unplugged on facebook and uh, i'm sure they're going to be doing some live events out there and whatnot uh maybe maybe not who knows but you got to stay tuned to find out um and then he's going to be taken off to tokyo he's just a regular um globe trotter at this point so he is not going to be with us for a couple of weeks i believe um and i will be here i apologize but that is it is what it is. Um, but this week, I thought it would be fun. Tyler suggested um, doing um, something. It's not quite a day six segment, but um, if we talked about things specifically in Anaheim that you could do that don't necessarily require um, a Disneyland ticket. You know, maybe it's just really busy during the day and you need like a two or three hour break that you want to get away from the park or Perhaps like your flight is in the afternoon and you don't want to invest in a whole nother day park ticket. So you're kind of like, what do I do? I don't want to just like sit around here. I want to explore a little bit. Well, we have some of our favorite things to do that some are in walking distance. And um, everything that we're going to suggest today is actually in is uh, going to be under a well, most of these are under a $10 Uber. But um, we'll get to the special section later where it might just be just a little bit over that. But um, I'm going to just... Uh, but before we get to that, I almost forgot the segment we start with every week, which is the things that we are most excited for in the land. And I accidentally closed my page that had that open. So, um, you know what, Tyler? I'm going to let you go first this week. No problem. No problem. Yeah. So, uh, actually, uh, I just recently went to uh, kind of a, an opening of the reimagining of World of Disney. So, World of Disney, for anybody that doesn't know, is... The big giant store there in downtown Disney, it has basically everything you need, Disney. Um, they just remodeled the entire thing, mm -hmm. and uh, as of, it's 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 been open, but as of October 26th, that's the official opening. So, very cool remodel. I really like it a lot. They kind of stripped away a lot of the 90s aesthetic that, was, that you could find there, and made it more of a warehouse. They gave it a story, so it's like a, a tour bus, uh, a, a place where you go to get tours go to Grand California and things like that. Um, and and I, I like how they've given it a story, actually. I think it's that's Disney magic right there. And, and one of the things that a lot of people were worried about was they were going to be ripping out too much Disney. It was just going to be this big, empty warehouse building that that 
just doesn't invoke that Disney feeling, but I can, I can like happily say that there's all these great projections everywhere and these uh, sketches that actually come to life yeah, and dance cool. around. And there's like um, this ink and paint wall where like Tinkerbell like flies through and makes these different paintings come to life. So I think it's got a lot of that magic. The, and, the store's and themed after the nine old men, is it not? It, it is yeah. themed after the nine old men um, as because basically the story is it was an animation studio, and this is all fabricated. It was an animation studio for a while when Walt Disney needed more, um, you know, more more room for animating, and they did a lot of work there. And then uh, in the uh, and then in, I'm trying to remember the timeline exactly, but at a certain point they had to close it down, and it became this tour bus place. And then the story is in 2001 they decided to open it as World of Color. Um, and then now that they've done the remodel, they, they went through, they started pulling down a bunch of, uh, you know, um, uh, they started pulling the walls down and they realized that there was a bunch of brick walls behind the walls that, uh, that had like, the tour bus on it and everything like that. So it, it's, it's a really unique idea. I, I actually really like the store a lot. It's much more open. Um, World of Disney used to be kind of scary to bring your kids into. Uh, I mean, not like I have a kid, but it, it looked scary to me. Like you wouldn't really want to let your kids run around with, cause it's easy to get out of your sight line and not stop shop. But now wide open, it's beautiful. I really like it a lot. Um, and just real quick, there are three things that they, that they're really pushing at the store now. They have a bunch of new t-shirts. So the, the new t-shirts are like, I'm not even kidding. There's gotta be like 30 or 40 like t-shirts t-shirt. i'm not even kidding like there's a lot of new product only at world of disney yeah and there's it's of- it's if you're wondering what it is it's the we stole this from etsy wall <laughs> like it's all <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. we we got the idea from shirts that people made on etsy but then we're gonna do them not as good but it's still right. but it is i do appreciate that you can get yeah. in there and you guys also you've had disney style out there in disney springs for a while now so now we finally have a pop-up shop of disney style so we get all those instagrammable you know, T-shirts that, that are coming over to uh, our neck of the woods now. And then uh, uh, we also have a, some new princess stuff. There's like a new princess line that's coming out. Um, and then the biggest thing, I think, is there's a new Mickey Mouse Club collection that's exclusive uh, well, only to World of Disney. So Tyler you can get it in, taken get it in my Orlando, thing too. away from me. <laughs> That Sorry? was the thing I was most excited about as well, <laughs> was the, uh, the Mickey Mouse Club line of clothing that was coming out. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's really cool. I mean, there's lots of stuff actually, but I don't know. The new store, I think it's really neat. I'm I'm really excited for it. Uh, I think it's a great upgrade. It's much nicer. It's easier to walk. It's all sorts of good stuff. So. Yeah, I I ours is um, modeled after the same aesthetic as yours. The effects aren't um, open in ours as of recording this, but as of the time of this airing, they will be functional and operating. Gotcha. Um, there was a cast and, member. They did tell us. They did tell us that the story is slightly different for, for each one. So in Orlando, it's actually a, like a fruit, like Anna, like they sell, they used to sell fruit out of, out of that world of Disney. And then, so it's not like a tour bus thing, you know, Interesting. it's a little bit, a little bit different story. Yeah. Um, but it's got that same wide open brick wall, um, kind of aesthetic. And I know we have the, uh, projections are coming. Um, the effects are coming and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I went in and checked it out. I mean, I checked out the, the, photos and videos of the Disneyland one as well. But um, I am a big fan, and this is the thing I was most excited about, was the um, the Mickey Mouse, um, the Mickey Mouse Club line that's coming. Like, they've, they've in the past had a t-shirt that was like Mouseketeer, you know, official Mouseketeer shirt or something like that. And it's kind of like an expansion on that line. And um, I really like because they have like these like um, kind of 50s style varsity jackets. Um, yeah. you know, like those, those, those are things that I really like. There's a yeah, lot of like, yeah, exactly. Leather jacket, letter, letter jacket type of thing. Letterman jackets. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like, it's just, it's really, I don't know. I, 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 I like that sort of stuff. I like the, um, the redo of kind of the baseball hat with the ears on it. Um, but those ears never stand up. I always kind of want one of those, but the ears are always kind of flopped backwards. They need to like add a little thing in the back. So they stay forward or something like that. Mm. But but no, there there's all there are a whole bunch of things there. There's a lot of really like classic looking stuff. Who's the leader of the pack? Things like that on shirts, and I, I, I am a fan. Um, and some are the 
softer quality shirts that they do there as well. But um, they also, when they were opening the sections of the store, they showed a lot of the Christmas um, stuff oh, is kind of out true. there, you know, right in yep. the front, which is really cool too. There's a lot of um, um, fun stuff. There's like the Christmas spirit jersey. Um, you know, there's um, don't make fun of me or mock me about this, but there is a hat with antlers on it. <laughs> and the ears and it I lights up and everything and I cannot remember what it says on it because the picture is to the side right now for some reason. Um but I really want this hat. I'm wear. happy that they made like they embraced the ugly sweater finally yes. for male and female yes. and for like little kids. Cause they're they're really cute. I, I'm really happy. There's like one that looks like a jumper. So, like, if you look far away, it looks like the female's, like, wearing, like, a jumper with, like, the, I don't know, whatever these are, straps. But then up close, you're actually wearing a sweater. But I thought that was really cute. And I want, like, every single Christmas um, thing on that Did wall. you see the onesie they had there, too? The, it was, like, the ugly yes. sweater, but it was the full onesie with, like, the hood and everything. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I don't but, know if I could I could sport that. But it, if you're, like, a loungy kind of person, I could totally see people, like, buying that. Well, so uh, here, I don't know if it happened. Well, you guys don't have a Christmas party. But um, we, yeah. for our Christmas party, a lot of families, which I think is insane sometimes because it'll still be 85 degrees outside at night. Um, they'll come in like pajamas. That's like the thing. They come to the party in pajamas. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. So, um, so I was like, oh, like that's, matching? that's cool. I'll maybe, maybe I can convince Craig to wear one with me. I can. Oh, onesies. <laughs> <laughs> I can see Craig's face probably like, like nah. nah. I'm in the minority. <laughs> Most of the merchandise that I saw from this reopened stores, I do not like, but <gasps> that's fine. I'm also, I'm reaching the point where I'm getting over Disney merch. It's just, well, it's, it's going through its cycle. It's hard when you like go to like put on a t-shirt on a day where you're like, I'm going to this place. And you're like, okay, nine out of ten of my shirts have Mickey Mouse on them. And you're like, I just want to wear a regular shirt right now. Like, I, I'm packing to go home for the weekend. And I was like, you know, wearing. I feel like for me, wearing the Mickey stuff outside of Orlando doesn't quite hit as well as it does when you wear it in Orlando. And so I was like, and plus I wanted to dress up a little bit. And I was like, mm, all my T-shirts are from Disney World and Disneyland. Great. The hat, by the way, with the antlers and the Mickey ears says light up the holiday and it lights up. And I'm going to get that. And I want to be wearing it in every one of our holiday vlogs. I know and that's then, a promise and I can't can, make. Uh, and then you can get drunk and you'll be Rhino the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Oh, snap. You did not. <laughs> okay. 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 I see you. I see you. That's the vlog we film when you get here for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Sounds oh, good. Fun. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. So stay tuned for that. Um, uh, well, inst- I'm going to – Tom's awfully quiet back there. Tom, do you have something right, you're um, excited about in the land this week? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk about something that's coming up this weekend that I'm excited about, which is Dapper Day. Uh, this is the unofficial event that happens uh, once or twice a year in Orlando and in and Anaheim. And it's where they encourage you to dress to impress. Um, dress up like they did when the park first opened back in back in the in the late fifties. Um, they have they try not to because it's unofficial, they try not to do a lot of um, gatherings, but they're going to get together in the afternoon and everybody ride the Mark Twain. Uh, they're going to do like a sunset ride on the King Arthur Carousel. Uh, and then they're also doing an expo at the Disneyland Hotel. Uh, what's weird is the expo like it costs to get into. It's like $10 this year. Oh really? Uh, but they'll have, but yeah, weird. But they'll have like a marketplace. They're gonna have entertainment. They have some some singers there, and a couple authors in there signing their books. So, it's a great event. I love these events where there's like a group mentality at the park. You know, you you, you look, you see somebody coming down Main Street that's dressed in in Dapper Day like you are, and you're like, yeah, that's really cool. Well, you guys kind of go a little more. It, I feel like it it goes. A little more all out, like it be, it well, becomes yeah, more because, of an event for you guys than us. Because there's so so many locals, yeah. The the locals really get into these events. Um, so so you, also, I can't imagine wearing most of these clothes in Orlando. Um. Yeah. So yeah. Well, that's the other part too. Is that a lot of the times it's um it's way too hot still. Um. But I'm looking at the Dapper Day website, and it looks like our Dapper Day in Orlando is until November 17th and the 18th. So 
maybe it will be a little cooler this time of year. But you're so you said this one is this upcoming. So that's the yeah, no, November third and fourth. November third and fourth. Okay, awesome. And then the expo. I was just looking to see what the what was involved at the expo here too online. But um, I know they do like there's like dancing. There's a lot of shops for clothes, so you can go right, buy yes. like cool like reusable like you know like old clothes that. Um, and then they have like a beard trimming area. Like, I just for saw men. that. They that's can, cool. Like, do yeah. That nice was it straight razor? Yeah. Yeah, stuff like that. Uh, I know they had they had some like pop up bars and stuff that were yeah, serving vintage, special vintage, drinks. Vintage and contemporary clothing, accessory, beauty, accessories, beauty products, bar- barbers, exhibitors, uh, performing live the San Andreas Sisters and Jennifer Keith. And it does Charles, get busy. And yeah. then Charles, Charles Phoenix will be there on Sunday, signing his book, and Chris Nichols. Who has a new book, Walt Disney's Disneyland, will also be there on Sunday afternoon signing his book. Yeah, and it says it says that ten dollar admission, you get the Dapper Day button or something with that. So oh, I cool. guess that, oh, cool. that's you're, you're paying for that and the the performance, the yeah. performers, yeah. I guess. So that's still surprising that they're going to charge ten dollars. Because... I mean, it's gotten so popular, and it's gotten yeah. like I remember the last time we went, like a couple years ago, just to check it out, and you couldn't walk in there because it was mm-hmm. just so busy. And yeah. then Trader Sam's gets packed so yeah. i don't know how busy this is gonna get but and i always love seeing dapper day with like the families because they like deck you know they get the kids involved too so they you know like like get the kids all dappered up and stuff it's so cute to see like the little girls in like the poofy dresses and little boys with bow ties it's so adorable i love it <laughs> we we usually, um usually the, usually the expos they hold them at the grand californian but apparently there must be just something going on because this one's way down at the disneyland hotel so that they've always oh, had it at the disneyland hotel disneyland. I was going to say, we were coming into town one weekend once. I remember um, pulling up in the car and there was like, it w- it would have been the spring dapper day. And I, I was I kind of blown away because we were only at the Disneyland hotel, like getting dropped off there. Um, I think that was like Pete was staying there and then we were staying at like, I don't know where we were staying, but Motel 6. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sometimes we stay in nice places, you know, <laughs> Motel 8. Uh, but like it's um, it's I remember like seeing the expo sign and being being kind of like like, wow, this is impressive because in Orlando, I just get the vibe that it's like it's like you see it and you're like, oh, those people are dressed nice. But it, it, it doesn't have that sea of people like you have, like you were saying that it, it's not just cool for the people doing it, it's kind of cool for the people visiting because like you said, like all those people being on the Mark Twain at the same time makes for pretty interesting picture opportunities and stuff. So so is it just because Disneyland where it's just a little bit smaller, more tight, than well, Disney World, like Tom where it's said, like bigger, so it doesn't seem. Well, and Tom said because you guys have locals too, so I think it, you, you. No, I think there are more people that come out to Disneyland yeah, for it. You have a, um, you have you have the ability to create events like this, you know, that, that you can get people passionate and, and involved in, and it's a little bit, we're Uh, a little more sprawling, I guess. Actually a big part for me personally, it's the fact that Dapper Day doesn't make When we think of Dapper Day, we think of dressing up in, uh, you know, 40s, late 40s, 50s, early 60s attire. And Mm -hmm. Walt Disney World wasn't around for that. So I think, Instead of doing Dapper Day here, like for a while there at Hollywood Studios, it made a little bit more sense yeah. because people were getting in that that also that 20s, 30s, 40s kind of vibe over there. But we should just embrace the fact that we're from the 70s and just go full out 70s for our event and do yeah, like awesome bottoms like that. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that would I'd be, be cool. That. Yeah, that would be fun because then it would make it its own unique thing here instead of like trying to adopt all the cool things that Disneyland does and then not do it as well. So, Disneyland well, they- Paris does Dapper Day too, which I think is actually really neat to see because all like the Parisian dresses that people like design, I feel like are like far cooler than like what we have here. But anyway, I like digress. But- well, Katrina, what are you uh, most excited for this week? <laughs> Christmas. Uh, so I love Christmas so so much, and I I'm just gonna talk about how Small World is now closed for the refurbishment to make it the Small World Holiday version, which is opening up on November 9th when all the Christmas decorations are ready. The castle's already getting snow on top, so I'm like super excited. And and soon, in a blink of an eye, everything's gonna be Christmas and Halloween's gonna be over. 
So yeah, I I am excited for the uh, Mater's Jingle Jamboree myself. That's yeah. like I I've never been at Christmas time. I've only ever been Halloween is the last time of the year that I go to Disneyland. I I don't know that that's going to remain true. We maybe we'll end up out there. I would love to go this year even if it's just for like 2 or 3 days just to check it out cuz um because yeah, I've never seen it. Um, and I want to see like Cars Land all decked out. I want to see uh, Small World for sure. Like I, Small I just Small World is you know. the best, especially at night, because the facade on the outside is all lit up in like in Christmas lights, and it's just such a beautiful, picturesque place to like just stand and just enjoy Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like so excited. Maybe next week we'll have to do a uh, like holiday 101. Like, what are the offerings? The same way we did the Halloween one. I think that would be yes. fun. Yes. Get in the spirit. We'll switch over real quick. And by next week, I mean next week. But um, <laughs> I was I was confused. Yeah, sorry. It's hard when you record before the date you have. I had to like do the math in my head, and I'm like, okay, today's October 29th. Next week is okay. Math, math, math. Business, business, business. Um, so that's what you're excited for, yes. And and I, I like a lot of the holiday merchandise too. I know Craig doesn't like it. It's okay though. It's it's okay. I, I it's you know what? I'm glad people enjoy it. I I've bought a lot of holiday merch in the past. This this round isn't my favorite, but that's, that's true. Life. And everybody to get in the Christmas spirit, because like I know Rhino, you like the Meters Junkyard Jamboree, like the Jingle Jamboree or whatever it's called. But if it was on Spotify. But Google does he website, sing you can holiday to songs? The soundtrack yes. of Luigi's and Meters Christmas. Well, I holiday speedings. Speaking of that, I I don't know. I know you don't normally contribute with the thing that you're most excited about, but you I did have you mentioned that uh, Meters. Uh, the Halloween one that we listened to is on on Apple streaming and Spotify yet? I haven't, but uh, you probably already figured it out by now. Well, I it's on there. Yeah, pretty if much. If not, you only have like two days before it's socially unacceptable to listen to it. <laughs> so, said the person who listens to Christmas music in May. Uh, that's because it's always okay to listen to Christmas music. <laughs> Halloween music is set for a certain amount of time, but I do have something that's exciting. <laughs> That's happening in the land, but I should say not the land. I'm going to scratch that and say in the universe. Ooh. Yeah. Taking this show out of boundaries here. (laughs) Uh, Starting today, as of the release of this, uh, through the rest of the week, um, Monday to Friday, over at... Um, I think it was Monday to Friday, over at Universal Studios Hollywood, they're actually going to be offering a daytime lights on self-guided tour of the Stranger Things house. Oh, cool. For Halloween Horror Nights. So they don't have, out in Hollywood, you don't have a, a lights on tour, RIP tour, like we do here in Orlando, where you get to pay an absurd amount of money to go behind the scenes and see the houses with all the lights on. And that way it gives you a, a better look at all the decorations that are inside a lot of the hidden touches that you can't notice when everything's flashing and dark and so yeah hollywood is kind of dipping their toes into this by making it a a free offering with your daytime park admission at universal studios hollywood and so you don't even have to be going to halloween horror nights that night if you're just in the park during that time you can go that's really cool just go in and you check out the house it's all self-guided so uh you know Hmm. you'll just walk through and be able to look at it that is the downside part of doing the lights on tours here in in orlando is that you're with a a vip tour guide who will give you a lot of the backstory uh the the decisions that creative went into making the house and then also pointing out a lot of the secret stuff that you might not know about uh so you know for for something like stranger things i think if you're familiar with the show, you can start seeing all those little those little touches that were put in there. Mm-hmm. But uh, regardless, it's it's very very cool that they're they're doing this. Hopefully, uh, you know I I know that budgets have slipped over the years at Hollywood, yeah. but hopefully, uh, you know they can find a way to say okay, this was really popular as a daytime thing. Next year, we'll offer it as a paid tour, and we need to start pushing some money back into Halloween Horror Nights yeah. so it's not just black hallways with drop-down boxes where we can try to scare you that way and be on the cheap. But, it's, a, it's a shame you know. because uh, the last year, 
it was like you it was not great and then but the two years before that it was amazing it was excellent like it was the i went over and over again because of the first time i went it just being so astounding they're in hollywood you know this is where they build real movie sets and like it it just feel felt like like how can you make it not better than orlando's when you have so much more resources than we have here I'm not and i don't mean that as a knock towards orlando because orlando is just phenomenal but it's just yeah that that's really cool so I, if you can take I, pictures of video of that i would well, be interested we, in seeing we can't that. because we're going to be coming to you guys oh so that's right you will be here yeah this is like my only moment that i'm yeah. actually going to go in like a scare me so i was actually <laughs> considering going and then i'm like ah, well i'll be in florida yeah, <laughs> i was really bummed out when i heard about this because i mean it sounds like a lot of fun and then the other thing too is they're doing like candy for kids right like uh, you can go and do trick-or-treating and stuff that just happened over the weekend yeah. Okay. When yeah. this is set out. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back where Rhino was now with the. It, we are time travelers. We are coming out. It's hard when you're traveling through time the way we do. Um, <laughs> well, that's really cool. That's fun. I, you know, I I wouldn't mind talking about Universal Hollywood from time to time either on this show. I know probably people don't like it, but we can slip it in here and there. So, because um, I think if you've never been, it's definitely worth going, especially if you're into movies, um, even a little bit, because um, it's really cool to be on a working film set. Um, well, that, thank you everybody for all your um, things you have shared with us today, your bountiful information. Um, well, we're going to move on to our discussion here, which like I said earlier was going to be all about the things in um, Anaheim that um, you can go out and do if you need a little break from the parks or you're just, you know, they're, they're kind of not really full day activities. Um, I mean, you, I'm sure you can make them into full day activities, but they're just like what we like to do in Anaheim. So this is just some of our favorite things that if you're there, we kind of say like, Hey, go check this out. Or, um, if you've been a lot, it might be worth, worth going to. So, um, I am going to dive right in and we'll, we'll move around the room and everybody can talk about something else or chime in whenever they want. We kind of made a little bit of a list of our favorites before we got started, but, um, one for me that I every trip I go, like I always make sure to go here, um, even if it's just like, you know, it's hot during the middle of the day and I want I want lunch that's not at Disney or I just I need a I need a break from the crowds or something like that is I will take a uh, lift over to um, the packing district. Um, and uh, that's like maybe I don't know, 10 minutes, 10 minute drive. If you if it's like, oh, uh, it's probably like a five minute drive. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, it's it's just it's super close, um, but it's it's really really cool. It's this whole like it's this building um, that essentially is like an old um, uh, train depot station. Um, they even have like a train car that's on the side that they use for like seating for um, one of the. Um, eateries in there and stuff and uh so in but inside of the building they have just it's like a co-op they have all these different um food places you know food and then some local vendors and stuff like that but um it's all it's not just like oh it's just different types of food it's all it's like instagram heaven in here for me is what i feel like you know um (laughs) uh you know tyler gave me some bad news recently too about yeah uh, one of my favorites that's in here sadly has closed. Yeah. He got uh, he got Tyler hooked on it, and now yeah. they both can't have it. I was like, oh, you know what? I'm really gonna go get. So it's just a, it's basically like a pho place, right? They do they do like a lot of noodles, but then they also have like bon mi sandwiches. And I split one with Rhino one time, and I was like, this is amazing. And then I went back for another one, gone. But um, yeah, the the packing district is amazing. It's got so many great places that you've never seen before, um, and. Yeah, it has all the eateries and everything, but probably my favorite place in the packing district is the Blonde Rabbit, mm-hmm. which is a little uh, hidden speakeasy bar where you actually probably should make a reservation. Uh, you go on Yelp and you can make your reservation there. And no kids. Yeah, no kids, um, but it has a dress code too, so make sure you have all this stuff you know, yeah, no, uh, no out shirts you with go. labels or anything like that. No uh, right. graphics, right? No graphics. Yeah, no shorts. Uh, so anyway, but it, it's a lot of little rules, and it seems like it's going to be a big hassle. But once you get in there, it is great. We've been a couple times now, and they just have amazing drinks, and they have some food there too. And the just the style of the whole room is is what I love the most, though. So yeah. it's it's great. Uh, but yeah, I've eaten. There's a fried chicken place there, which is really good. Yeah. Um, there's an Indian place there, which is which is pretty tasty too. We we got some butter chicken there not too long ago, um, and yeah, it's a, it, 
that's one of my favorite places in Anaheim, and and I and I owe it to you guys for showing it to me. I didn't even know it was there. Oh yeah, well I owe it to Craig. Craig took me there. Um, but uh, I misspoke earlier. It's not a train depot. It is. Um, the Anaheim Packing House is one of the last remaining citrus packing warehouses, which has been historically preserved and retrofitted as one of the great original American food halls. So that was the, but there is a train on the side. So that's why I was like, that's what I thought. But um, there's um, one of my favorite um, places in here, which they have now expanded um, from beyond the packing district into, um, they have one at Universal Hollywood on their city walk as well, is the, um, oh, good Lord, the bubble monster. tea place, the Thai tea place, the, um, yeah, monster. What, what is yes. it called? Little monster? Snow monster. Yeah, the mini monster. Mini monster. Mini okay. So, because their handle online is not the same as the title of their well, re- like. It's- they have two versions of their store. So this is a mini monster. They also have the bigger version, which is just called. I'm blanking on what it's even called at this point. But yeah, mini monster is like the small version of their store. So it actually has a smaller menu than some of their locations. Yeah, it essentially has a couple different types of Thai tea, um, and then they do the little macaroon ice cream sandwiches, which are really good, too. Um, they always have, like, crazy different flavors. Um, their their Instagram is Snow Monsters Snow Monster OC, um, and that's how uh, – but they've got a couple of locations around. Like, there's one in Los Angeles, Westminster, Irvin, and Long Beach. This was the first one I had ever heard of, and it was – I literally – we found it because of Instagram, and I was like, oh, it's in the packing district. Like, the food you get there, it it's really good. It's not expensive um, if you go and get the Thai tea, but it comes – you can get it in this, like, either this, like, mason jar that has a little um, – a little uh uh like lid that's like the the monster is this like white dome with like these kind of mickey like ears and you can like i don't know i still have mine and use it i drink my sangria out of it when i'm feeling great and um that's one of the places i recommend giving a try over there but there are some other um things that are really cool that are right in that area one of those i know craig really enjoys do you want to talk about the brewery that's over there I can. Yeah. So right across the grassy knoll area that is in the Anaheim packing district is, is Anaheim brewery. And it is, it was originally founded back in the late 1800s, if I can remember, or the early 1900s. I'm not going to bother with those exact details, but essentially prohibition closed it down. Then around, uh, 2012 they decided to reopen it and go full force with the brewery there again and it is it is not the most complex of breweries so they don't have a a very large menu um it's they've got a a lot of i think about six standards and then maybe two or three rotating depending on what time of year it is what it will be but it is they try to embrace classic anaheim in this in this area with the the artwork on the labels for their beer with with a lot of the designs they use they get kevin and jody to do a lot of work for them Uh, they it's just it's kind of it's not the most amazing craft beer place you're going to find but if you want to get a sense of how like what anaheim is for for a lot of the locals i feel like this is a, a good place to to dip your toes in and it's you know it's good price and like we all said it's it's one of the closest breweries you can find if you're going off property so good price great location because it's like it's not you know if this was something that was maybe like nestled somewhere else hidden somewhere you might it might not be quite the destination that it should be um but it's when it's attached to this place that has like 30 plate 30 different types of unique food options in it it kind of really ups its level and plus like craig said there is a grassy knoll area that's really nice inside of there and they're always um they've been expanding that packing district area too so there are new restaurants that have been opening all the time i ate at a um like uh like a bow place i cannot remember the name of it something 21 um and that was really good uh but there's also on the other side if you go to the other side of the building there's another brewery right there that i enjoy called the unsung brewing company and that's like a superhero themed brewery and they even went as far as to like create their own um comic book and stuff and they have a really cool i really like their design work and the labels and things like that and they usually have a pretty good like sour um or uh just 
it's kind of like all over the place. They're they they rotate what they what they offer pretty often and they do a lot of special events there too so it never hurts to be like oh i'm going over here let me see if there's something going on this week or anything like but if you do go to the anaheim brewing i like the hefeweizen that's there it tastes like banana bread yeah it's they do a lot of special events in that area too uh especially with anaheim brewery i know they do trivia i think on wednesday nights that i've been there for they do food trucks a lot of the time uh they uh they have extra special events like their sausage fest fest that happens uh right at the end of summer they have Oktoberfest, which we were there for last year which was a lot of fun they had the the mm-hmm. german umpa band yeah that out was fun and that was drinking cool. out of your good Oktoberfest steins so they, they yeah they they there's almost seasonally something special to get you out there for yeah so. the place i was talking about by the way was eight 18 folds and it was dim sum um so i was way off but yeah i I definitely recommend this place i will say if you're driving there parking can be difficult be careful um because there are areas that look like you can park and you can't there is valet that is in that area as well that's i think it's like three dollars to valet yeah the valet is three dollars so it's not that bad yeah so you might i mean if you're having trouble just valet like but like we said the 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 lift and the uber from there i think is like six or seven dollars um uh, Tom, what about you? You got a favorite place that you like to go? Um, well, I mean, I would think we would probably be remiss if we didn't talk about Anaheim Garden Walk. Mm-hmm. It's just so close with the walking distance of, of most of the hotels uh, in the Anaheim Resort area. Uh, I don't know how long has it been there? 15 years, and it's kind of still trying to discover itself. But go there for the food. Um you know, downtown Disney, we all love downtown Disney, but the restaurants are so packed, so busy. Hop over to Garden Walk. They have a lot of the national chains there, so it's something familiar. If, you if you know, your kids don't want to try something new, they have um, P.F. Chang's. They have California Pizza Kitchen. Uh, Bubba Gump. Factory. <laughs> um, was a Bubba Gump Shrimp. Uh, so lots of lots of big restaurants that that people feel comfortable with. Uh, there's a little bit of entertainment there. They still have their bowling lanes. Uh, House of Blues moved over there from downtown Disney. So if you want to catch a concert or something like that, it's a good opportunity for that. And then as of this recording, they still have um, the AMC theaters opening there uh, this coming summer at at the Garden Walk. Yeah. So it's a nice place to like kind of get out if you like again if you need a break like you said from the crowds right and in the you, evening or something yeah yeah you got somebody who's like a picky eater and they only eat specific things you know the the like you said the cheesecake I've been to the cheesecake factory that was over there before and you know and I I judge myself a little bit while I'm there because I'm like what am I doing in California at a cheesecake factory but but I also <laughs> will say that the thing I like about Garden Walk is they have places that are open after the parks yeah closed Mm -hmm. down and that's what i hate about downtown disney when we do have to stay on disneyland property at at one of the hotels there it's like i besides trader sam's and uh and then whatchamacallit in the in the grand californian their bar oh yeah the hearthstone yeah besides hearthstone there that's the only things that are open past midnight and it's it's okay, but sometimes you just want to be able to like go and get some drinks yeah. after the parks some are closed, apps. and you don't want to pay Disney prices for it. So you can just go over to Garden Walk. There's a couple things that are open. I think there's at least one place that's always open there until about 2 a.m. So it's a nice nice way to to wind down, especially if you're staying off property. Well, yeah, and, and Tom was saying it's very convenient, centrally located. It's very convenient to like any one of those hotels that we often talk about. Like when we stayed at Hotel Indigo, we were right in front of Garden Walk, and um, you, it's it's super easy, and it's you know during, right there, so um, it's very convenient. Um, but there's you know, and it's and it's familiar too, you know. So I know sometimes when you're in an environment where you've traveled and it can be very stressful to kind of find a place that's new or different or some, you know, some days you're just like, okay, okay, I need to reset and I need a, you know to collect myself in this familiar territory. So that's there. So that's cool. Well, um, uh, we should probably talk about since we've mentioned the food a lot, some of our favorite local um, dining places. Tom, I know you have more to add to this one. Oh yeah. Um I think this just opened a few years ago. Uh Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. Yeah, Craig mm-hmm. made me go there one night. 
opened just down uh, Harbor Boulevard. Uh, it's a popular Southern California small chain of Southern inspired food. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, it, you want to awesome. go there for chicken and waffles. So it yeah, is yeah. awesome. It's very affordable and mm-hmm. it's, it's ton per- of food. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and it wasn't very expensive either. It was it was no. like you know, affordable. Yeah. Right? Well, you said affordable. Yeah. I'm sorry. Exactly. I was literally <laughs> looking at pictures of the chicken and lost in it right now. So yeah. <laughs> you're like, ooh, chicken. Yeah. No, like, it, mm, and hungry. from it, it's obviously it's closer if you're coming from like the convention center than actual mm-hmm. Disneyland. But again, with a if you want to take an Uber or you could ride Art if you have that the resort transportation line. It's it's not that far down the road at all. You know, I if if you're braver. You want to walk, go for it. But I, we walked there, and I remember being like, "No, did we walk there or drive there?" We drove there. Okay, yeah, never yeah. mind. Yeah, that was one of the few times we don't often rent a car, and that was one of the times we rented a car. So it was, it was cool. It was something different. I feel like we went pretty late when we went too. That's why I was, yeah. I was just trying to find the hours on here, but um, I'm on the yeah. They're open early and open late for sure. Yeah, because I I remember going late at night and being like, oh, I'm tired, but it was cool. It was fun to do something like that. But another one that I like, and I went to this one with Tom, and I've been with uh, Tyler and Katrina as well. And Katrina, you probably want to talk about this one because I know they cater to gluten free uh, diets. Is the Pizza Press? Yeah, it's kind of just like what is it? Right on Harbor, like right across from the park. So you Herber. just like, exit, and it's just like <laughs> jump all over. <whenever>, but. <laughs> Is that Herber? Uh, Herber Vulvar? Herber, 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 Herber. Uh, and it's, it gets busy, I think, but it's, yeah. it's kind of like Blaze Pizza. Has anybody who's ever been to Blaze Pizza before? It's like a line, like a line where you kind of just go and pick your toppings and stuff, and they kind of like walk you through. But they do have gluten free pizza crusts. So you just kind of have to remind them to be safe and change their gloves and use different kinds of stuff and wash them. Uh, but it's actually, it's actually not that not that expensive. It's really affordable and you get like a good sized pizza and then you can get like whatever toppings you want on it. Yeah. I I think that actually I like it better than blaze. I feel like it has more choices and it's like kind of a little bit higher quality. I mean, is that just me? Cause I just feel like it's got, it's got go there. I'm like, Oh wow. There's like a lot here. Like you can make different types of pizza. Whereas at blaze, it's like, you kind of have to make more like Italian pizzas here. You can kind of go outside the realm of Italian. If that I, makes I sense. think it's I got a little bit okay. really. Okay. I don't it's, know. it's got a wider variety, but it's also for me, it, it comes down to like a theming a little bit. Cause the, um, the pizza presses are like, they're a 1920s, like newspaper themed kind of like an Americana thing, like theme restaurant. So it gives me a very, I don't know how to describe it. You immediately go in there and like, yeah, I'm in a pizza place. And it, so you've got, but in that, like, it feels like almost a hometown pizza place vibe. Yeah. Well, it's got the white tile all over the walls and stuff. And I think that really goes a long way to make it feel like that classic pizza place. If that makes sense. It's the white tile everywhere with the kind of, you got the oven, uh, the fire going and I don't know. Yeah, and um, what what I like too is they have um, some local beers on tap as well. So if you're, um, you know, if you want to try something local, you can you can do that. Um, but also uh, the convenience of to where it is located in relation to the entrance to Disneyland is it's literally like just across the street and like down like two seconds. Um, so it's I, I I feel like it can't. When you're leaving the park, it's like what Craig said. Sometimes you don't want that Disney food. You don't want – you just want to, like, have something like that. Like, I – it's very – I don't know. The, I had it on one on that uh, – when I was there for that week when we went at the end of the day. And it was, like, just the right thing to be having. It, like, hit the spot yeah, perfectly. It was you know? really good. Yeah. Um, I know it's just pizza, but – and another one that you should probably go and try that is located with a very short Uber right away is In-N-Out Burger. Um, if you're traveling to California, and you, especially if you're on the East Coast, if you've never had In-N-Out Burger, there is a location that is very convenient um, that you can get to for a fairly inexpensive Uber. Um, or you can make friends like I do, and they'll bring you. That's how I've made all of my friends in California is – based on our love of In-N-Out Burger. And I have been there super late at night. And um, I don't know. Every time I eat it, I never, I'm like, what am I doing here? And then I eat the burger and I'm like, mm, I didn't make any bad decisions today. <laughs> That's just it's just, know. it's cheap and it's good. It's never frozen, always fresh. Uh, I, you know, I, I love my little protein style burger that they make with no bun, but then I make it unhealthy and I shove fries in there. And then I eat it. <laughs> 
Story. It's one of those things that's become kind of legendary, and if you've never been able to try it before, it's and you're coming to Disneyland, it's a it's a nice opportunity to go out there and you know spend forty five minutes just trying to get a little burger and then coming back to the park. Yeah, yeah. and their milkshakes, chocolate's the best. I am gonna say that um, if you are in Anaheim and you're on your Disney vacation and you feel like you need a haircut, I had a pretty unique experience that was um, near the packing district that I meant to that I meant to mention it's called bar beer and you can go and there's like a bar in there and they give the, the pints are $5 and you can pick all these like different local beers and they give you a beer while they like shave you. And it's a very old style barber style, you know, they'll give you that, that uh, straight razor shave and everything while they give you beer. And it's, it's, um, Maybe on the so pricer totally. side for totally what people want to pay for. While they're doing it with yeah. you. <laughs> oh, they're not. But, you know, when they <laughs> accidentally slip and slice some of my head out, it's like, I'll be happy. So it's fine. Um, <laughs> they didn't. They were great. It was it was a really, they were top-notch service. And I, I actually am like, it's a place like I kind of want to be like, it's a treat yourself place, you know. Um, but speaking of that, I, um, Craig and I, um, and he is definitely more knowledgeable at this than I am, but... Um, I know one of the things we like to do is visit local breweries a lot, and we did mention Anaheim Brewing and the Unsung Brewing, but there's a couple other that are really, like, do not misses, I feel like. Do you want to talk about one of those? Uh, no, because I don't want people going where <laughs> I go. <laughs> I, I, I will tell you, Bottle Logic, when I tried to go when I was there last time, was, like, swamped. And that's exactly why I don't want to talk about it, because I don't want people making it a lot more difficult for me to enjoy the places that used to be very accessible. But we already mentioned the name, so it's too late now. you've heard about it now. If you're interested in beer, uh, you've probably heard of Bottle Logic by this point. It's not national by any means at all, but it's it's one of it's one of those breweries that you've probably heard about it if you're in the beer scene. And you'll want to try it. Yeah. And actually, Disneyland, well, not Disneyland, it's, I guess, more California Adventure has been serving a lot of their beer recently, like with the Lamplight Lounge opening, things like that. They've been adding Bottle Logic beers to their menu periodically. And I believe that Bottle Logic is making beer specifically for Disney. Yeah, it's an exclusive one. Yeah. For Lamplight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it's cool. And if you're you're really into um, graphic design, I think Bottle Logic has a really interesting aesthetic. Um, it's very like old. I don't want to say old electricity. I don't know how to describe it. Old Edison type thing. But um, there's also a really big uh, Carl Strauss um, uh, brewery located in Anaheim that is right outside, uh, right next to. Uh, is it next to Angel Stadium? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is another uh, awesome thing to do. Um, I haven't gotten to do it yet because um, I just haven't really hit the trips quite right but i would love to go to angel stadium to catch a baseball game someday craig did have the opportunity on one of our trips last year you got to go to a hockey game that was, yeah, at, was what, the too. honda center yeah it's a. Uh, I will say at least for hockey uh anaheim ducks have pretty much zero support uh, in terms of their their fan base, my friend Jeremy loves it. <laughs> I, and there's a reason though why there's there are some people who love it. It is probably of all the arenas I've ever priced, including the ones that I've gone to, it, you can not find a lot of uh, hockey tickets that are a better value than going to see the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, people just don't care about them, so it is very very affordable. Um, I think the game that I was looking at, we're talking like for upper deck seats, like, you know, complete nosebleed. We're still talking under $20 a ticket for that. It might have even been single digits. Uh, so it's it's not out of the range of being able to afford it. I know I know. sometimes when you think about like sporting tickets, uh, it's, it's just out of the question because of how expensive it is. But the, it's definitely not that and i've priced out anaheim angels tickets too and that's also not that expensive it's it's definitely more expensive than seeing a hockey game but uh it's also more affordable than like going to dodger stadium uh if you're you want to see the angels play so there's plenty of options right around there but <clears throat> I, tyler and i do like carl strauss we went there together shared a nice little date it was oh, uh, very yeah. romantic but i i recommend it too um you might have been to a different carl strauss location or the one over at universal city walk in hollywood but 
what caught me off guard is I thought that they had a good tap selection there with their different beers, and then you go to this one, and it's like three times the amount of different it's choices. A, it's a big space there that they have. Yeah, it, it's yeah. a big space, but they actually you get a chance to see pretty much all of the different beers that they make instead of just just the small selection that you get at Universal. So I, w- I was really blown away and impressed by it. So Tyler is the one who suggested it, and I was like, well, uh, you know, I've gone there before, but I'm so glad I went to see the one in Anaheim. And they have a big restaurant, too, so you can bring the kids. Yeah. You can try beer, and they can have food. And the food's good. I believe you can do this at a lot of the breweries, but I, I, one of my favorite things to do at Carl Strauss is to, like, get a growler, and then you have, you know, get, like, figure out what beer you like. I mean, I really like the Rec Alley Stout, and I just get, like, a growler. It's very cheap to fill it up, like, a little bit over $10 or something like that. And that's another way, like, if you're staying – in you know in the disney area you can and you have like your little mini fridge in your hotel or whatever just buy a growler and that way you can save some money on getting some drinks or whatever if that's the type of thing you want to get the first thing uh, i do when we get to california (laughs) is i immediately get to a brewery and i have beer stocked in my fridge from day one (laughs) so there's actually um a place we went to on on one of our more recent trips that we went to for the first time and i have since been back to like three or four times um was the brewery um, that you, Craig had found, and we went, and um, this you place... You should spell it out. It, yeah, okay, yeah, it's not spelled normally. It's B-R-E-U-R-Y, so no W. Brewery. Um, and it's in, I don't know how to say it, Placentia? Yeah, it's not in Anaheim, so this is a hike if you don't have However, a However... There is a location in Anaheim, I, I learned, yeah. So the, I'm speaking about the other one. I ha- can't speak about the Anaheim one, but if it's as good as this one that we went to, it's worth it. But you think it was worth the drive? What do you think? It was like $15 over there? Yeah, it's um, – no, it, it's closer to like 25 bucks. Was it? Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's expensive. So you have to really, really want to go there if you don't have a rental car. This is, this is more of an honorable mention for us, but I, I did go um, uh, um, when I was there last month – or whenever I was there last time, but, um, and I, I like it because there, you know, there are a ton of beers on tap and it is also a place where like, I think you can find a beer for any human being that you are with, unless you're Katrina and you need gluten-free beer, which they might also have, but I don't know. But, um, but they have like Cider. flavors and it, it turns over so quickly and it's just all like, you know, they'll be like, Oh, here's this blueberry cobbler beer. Here's this like dragon fruit, lime beer you know but then there's like just the standard you know here's a hefeweizen here's here's a stout you know and it's all really cool and you do it all in these like little pints that you can get and you can get the full size if you want to you can leave with the growlers stuff like that i recommend it i found out that there is an anaheim location called the beer i at the brewery excuse me the brewery i don't know how to say it um the tarot tarot is that how you say it it's more of their uh it's more of their interesting uh like their their specialty lines sours which is the stuff i like so i i i'm like i'm i'm interested in visiting this one next time so i'm i'm I, you know i just want to say that and then um we've got a couple honor, honorable mentions that are just outside of anaheim i am right down knott's Berry farm area and buena park katrina you mentioned one of these places that i have eaten at that is pretty delicious Portos. Portos is like a staple in in like Southern California. And as soon as you see this like cream colored box, you're like, that's Portos. And they ha- they just made this like what, a couple years ago. They just built a Portos bakery over in Buena Park. It's huge. And it's massive. And there's like a bakery and then there's like kind of like a restaurant. They have like sandwiches and soups and stuff. But like their famous thing is their mashed potato balls. I can't, I can't eat them. But I remember them when I was a kid. But Ran, this Ran place stay. Is hands down, you have to go. Yeah, it's it, if you're like familiar with like Puerto Rican food, Reno Say Papa is like a, it's like a, a, a mashed potatoes with like um, meat in the center, and then it's like kind of like fried for a second. So, um, mm-hmm. but this is like. So many different things that you are in the middle of it. I, I went with some friends that used to live down the street from there, and whoo, it was good. <laughs> the desserts yeah. were amazing too. Leche cake is really uh, like people yes. like that one too with the fruit. Yes. Oh my gosh, it's everything really is really good there. So if you're going over to Knott's Berry Farm, or there's a little restaurant, and I know Tom loves this place. Do you want to talk about some fried chicken you can get over there, Tom? Oh, you talking about Mrs. Knott's Fried Chicken Restaurant? Yes, sir. Ah. Uh. 
That is, <laughs> you, you only have to eat once in the whole day if you go to Mrs. Knight's Fried Chicken Restaurant. It's a it's a little pricey. It's like what? It's probably up to nineteen bucks now. But you you get, think it's pricey for the full meal, really? No, well, I mean. Compared to KFC, I guess, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> compared to yeah. Yeah. Or, or even compared to Plaza Inn, I think Plaza Inn's like seventeen and a half now. So, uh, but you get like soup and salad. You get what half a chicken, yeah, um, and then just biscuits after biscuits after biscuits with the with the homemade. Well, it's not homemade any, homemade anymore. Uh, the boysenberry jelly, uh, and then you get dessert too. It's just, it's just, it's, and it's home style fried chicken, and it's so good. I am all about that boysenberry stuff there. I went there with Tom, um, and we had quite a meal, but I, I had like some boysenberry like lemonade or something. There was the boysenberry, yeah. yeah, there was like a pie. There was the chant, like, oh my God, it's so good. The boysenberry and it, beer? Yeah, don't, I was going to say, don't forget about the beer. Yeah, well, yeah, that's what I was going to say is that, that Shock Top partnered with um, Knott's Berry Farm and they created a boysenberry flavored Shock Top that is probably yeah. the best Shock Top I've ever had. I am, I like Shock Top quite a bit. Um, and this boysenberry flavor is amazing. Um, I don't. I thought you could only get it during Not Scary Farm. Is that like a regular thing? You can get it. Normal? It's a regular thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank you, yeah. thank you. God answered my prayers. Um, Did you like so. expand it because it got so popular? Yeah, and well, they made a new bar over at the. It used to be. I think it originally started as a boysenberry festival thing, yeah. and then yes. and then it moved on from there. It became so popular that now they just brew it year round. So. Oh, cool. Well, all right. Yeah. Well, um, I think there's just one more thing I want to mention in Buena yeah. Park, though, is Medieval Times. Oh, right that's right. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right next to Porto's there, Medieval Times. Uh, I, I'm sure you guys have seen Cable Guy before. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Jim Carrey's uh, masterpiece. But, like, it is so great. You get to go watch all the knights fight, and you sit in a section. You sit in, like, the blue section or the red section, so you get to cheer on your knight. So sometimes it can be a little bit of a bummer because maybe your knight might be the first one out of the competition. But You eat with but, your fingers? Yeah, you get to eat with your fingers. They serve you, uh, you know, um, chicken, soup and yeah, chicken soup. and potatoes, soup garlic bread. Um, finger food. So if you're a germaphobe, I don't know. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy Medieval Times, and I, I really want to go back again because it's been a while since I've been. But... You can uh, have a great time there, and it's actually not that expensive for like having dinner and watching a show at the same time. Um, they'll do like birthday shout-outs and things like that, so it's fun. There's a pirate one right next to it, too. I don't know if we want to mention that. We have them in Orlando, I've too. I've never been. We have like a couple of those type of shows I'm, here. I'm going yeah. to jump on Tyler's, though, not, not endorsing Medieval Times. I do not <laughs> endorse it. It doesn't have my stamp oh. of approval at all. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to just flat out say, if you want the best poke you've oh, yeah. ever had, you need to go to a little store called Pokenometry in Anaheim. They have uh, so recently good. added locations in... Uh, in um, Hollywood, and then there's one other one. I don't remember where it's at, though. I've never come come near it, so I don't really know it. But I don't I don't care what you think your favorite poke is. Um, this is the best fish mine's you Pikachu. will get. What's that? <laughs> oh, you're an idiot. Um, I said, I said mine's Pikachu. Sorry. Yeah. Come, yeah, go um, on. This is the best fish you will get. In, that I've had in California, uh, and Corey Martin agrees with me. When when we're out there together, we pretty much eat Poconometry like three or four times a trip. It is like, and this is from a person who probably has mercury poisoning. I was just going to say, from, Corey Martin, mercury is his yeah. blood is probably fifty percent mercury yeah. at this point. And we, you know, regardless of where we've traveled, haven't been like, with the exception of some in Hawaii. If, if we're talking the United States in, in the 48 states, this is the best poke either of us have ever had. And so I I really think it's amazing. It's it's not a lot of thrills, but it's good portion sizes at a great price and just the freshness of the ingredients. It is it is spot on. And I will tell you right now, they do the sushi rito. Pocorito, whatever they call it there. There is a wrap. And it that it's does not sound appetizing to me whatsoever. Oh my get out of here. Cut the feed. He's out. Um Okay, well, so just so everybody's clear, those are some of our favorite things that we've done over the various trips we've made to Anaheim and things like that. And I'm sure we've missed out on some stuff. We're not, this wasn't really like geared to tell you to like 
We're not telling you everything that Anaheim has to offer. With all that, there still are a lot more experiences that you can have there. Um, but these are things that we've done that we could speak for personally. And it it gets hard. We've been there so much now that we have this list that kind of my list when I go to Disneyland does not just it's not just Disneyland anymore. So um so I do think a lot of these are worth it. And just to run over that again really quickly, it was just the packing district. There's Garden Walk. We have Roscoe's uh, Chicken and Waffles. There's Pizza Press, In-N-Out Burger, the local breweries that are like Anaheim Brewery, Bottle Logic, Carl Strauss, the brewery, um, Unsung Brewing. There's Angel Stadium. Um, there's the uh, – what did you say was the Honda Center for the uh, Ducks games? And then Tyler and Katrina like medieval times and – um, okay, what's wrong with medieval yeah. times? I need to find this out right like now. Six. <laughs> that was the coolest. Is it thing the ever. food, or do you just hate the show, or is it both? Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, I don't like the smell, to be honest with you. Um, I don't remember the smell. It smells now like horses. Now I want horses. to go back and see what the smell is. It smells like horses. It smells like horses. You, want, like horses. you yeah. want to see the smell? <laughs> I mean, I get What I is happening with your senses? <laughs> it's that gluten-free diet. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but anyway, so yeah, there's Mrs. Knott's Fried Chicken, the Poconometry, um, which, you know, Craig, Corey can't speak more highly of. Uh, but those are just some of our favorites. If we've missed some and you, you're frequent, you're you know a frequent visitor or a local of Anaheim, please feel free to let us know um, some of your favorite places that we could check out the next time we go. Um, you know, leave that in the comments on YouTube. If you're listening on iTunes, please feel free to rate and review our podcast. You know, we always welcome constructive criticism, things you want to hear about us. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, remember to subscribe to the channel. You can see all of our Disneyland vlogs, this show, other shows, Disney World, Disney Cruise Line, whatever, all that jazz. Um, but when you subscribe, make sure you hit that little bell, and it'll let you know whenever we post a brand new video. Um, but that will do it for this episode of The Diz Unplugged. And remember, this is not – I'm not going out. I just forgot to say, all of the places we mentioned, we'll put – like information in the show notes about those places for you. So you, you, you don't have to listen to this crazy rant I'm in, but thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for having this conversation with me and we will uh, see you next week with a new episode of the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged until then. Happy Halloween, everybody. Bye.